Hello everyone. A few months ago, I created a short video demonstrating how to perform basic data entry tasks in Google Sheets using AppScript. Many of you enjoyed the video and I appreciate the positive feedback. Some viewers requested an Excel version of the tutorial. So in this video, I'll guide you through simple data entry in Excel using VBA. This project utilizes exactly the same interface as the Google Sheets version. If you're interested in learning both AppScript and VBA, you can observe how the AppScript code translates into VBA for achieving the same functionality in Excel. It's a two-way learning opportunity. Now, as you can see, I've opened the Excel file and there are three forms, horizontal, vertical, and a flexible one. In the third form type, you can place form fields anywhere in the spreadsheet. I have provided the code for different scenarios, so you can choose the form type that suits your use case. Ideally, you'd pick one, but I've provided all three for flexibility. When you perform data entry in any of the forms, the information is recorded in both the form and the record tab. You can customize this behavior based on your needs. Let me demonstrate by filling out these three forms individually and clicking Add button. As you can see, the data entry is working as expected. Now you might be wondering how the dropdown is working. I have simply applied data validation of type lists to ranges containing activity, user, and duration fields. You can do so easily by going to Data Menu and then click on the icon for data validation. Next, choose List Type, and then in the source provide the respective range. Here, I have provided the ranges from dropdown tab as its data source. Now let's delve into the code. You can access the VBA editor by pressing the Alt plus F8 keys in Windows, or by going to the Developer tab and then clicking on Visual Basic. If you can't see the Developer tab, then go to File Menu, then Options, then Customize Ribbon, and enable the Developer tab in the Ribbon settings. I've incorporated a few customization options so that you can tailor this Excel file to meet your specific requirements. Let's walk through the customization possibilities. Sheet Name you can customize the name of the sheet containing your form. In the code, find the constant form sheet name as a string. Update it with your desired sheet name, such as Form 1, Form 2, or Form 3. Form Fields Range Specify the range containing your form fields. For instance, in Form 1, I have B1 to B6. Adjust the range accordingly in the code by updating the constant form range with your desired range. In the third type of form, where the fields are spread out in the different cells, for that case, you can list down all the cells in this array separated by comma like this. Record tab. If you want to record your data in a separate tab, you can customize the record sheet name. Locate the constant record sheet name in the code and set it to your desired sheet name. Data entry behavior. The current setup adds entries to both the form tab and the record tab when you click the add button. If you wish to customize this behavior, you can comment out specific lines of code. For example, Comment out the line responsible for adding form data to the record tab by prefixing it with a single quote. Comment out the line for adding form data to the form tab if you prefer not to perform data entry in the form tab itself. That concludes the customization part. Now if you want to understand how the code works, here's a brief overview. The code begins by declaring variables for the sheet name, form range, and record sheet. It then creates an array from the form range and checks if any form fields are empty. If all fields are filled, it performs data entry in the respective tabs, clearing the form range afterward. If you want more detailed videos around VBA, then please let me know in the comments. Feel free to download the Excel file from the link in the description, but keep in mind to unlock the file after downloading. Right-click the file, go to Properties, and check the Unlock This Project box to enable the macros or code. If you find this video helpful, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.